like to s study or, or explore different approaches to simplification of a complex subject. And uh, this, this question has arisen a number of times within the group and I thought this would be a great opportunity to just look at some different artists and the way they have chosen to simplify what could be a, an incredibly complex subject. So I'm going to start out with uh, my good friend Jill Carver. And this obviously could be a, a highly complex subject. But she has chosen to simplify it by number one. I mean, this sounds this sounds easy, uh, like kind of a a pat answer, which it is certainly not. Let me get my little stylus deal up here. I know I'm always fiddling with these things, um, and Jill has simply chosen to to see big and by that I mean it, it helps if you squint down at your subject it, it also helps if you work out beforehand out at, as in a thumbnail right there on the spot what are the big shapes what are the most important shapes and how much attention am I going to give to the details in there and so Jill has determined that that obviously these the 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 fall trees along the shore of this uh, creek or river uh, are are in, very important as a lead in to these wonderful big shapes back here in the, in the background these that are cooler than than what's in the foreground so in order to do that uh, this takes a rather brave move on your part. And by brave, I would mean simply choosing a large brush and not allowing yourself to um, slide over into the, your little brushes, your number twos and number ones, <laughs> and and keeping a full palette. I mean, I, in other words, I mean keep, by that I mean a lot of paint out there on your palette, so you're not constantly mixing, remixing, and. Uh, Jill will invariably use a, a, a restricted palette, a limited palette, and it changes from one piece to another. And this is, again, another great example. You saw some of the, our, our marvelous work in the previous deliverable. So uh, that's one way to do it, is simply use a larger brush. And, and I know, I don't want, don't want to get redundant here, but I know it sounds simple, but believe me, mentally, it's hard. It's hard to, to force yourself to do that. But uh, it's a tremendous exercise, whether you're working in the studio or you're working outdoors, you're working still life, landscape, figure, it doesn't matter. Uh, pick up those bigger tools and see what a difference it can make because it forces you to simplify. And so that's, this is one way to do it. Let's go up here and look at, um, this is a piece uh, from a fellow I know uh, that I've painted with, and he paints very large outside. I mean, he's very excellent painter, Greg Packard. And this, I just, I just photographed this with my phone at a, a, at a friend's house and he had, who has a marvelous collection. And uh, I thought this would be perfect for our, our subject. And again, uh, large brushes and not allowing yourself to fall into that trap of, of, the, of using the, the, the smaller tools. And in this case, you can see, uh, you know, again, a, a, a limited palette, but Greg is, is simplifying. Look, I mean, this is, this is a stand of, of winter trees, of cottonwoods that, I mean, they, you know, they're deciduous trees. I lost all their leaves and they present these, what could be very complex shapes if we allowed ourselves to get into it and fuss around and paint every little leaf and, and limb, or limb and, 
and uh, from large to t tiny little things, which is we get wrapped up in that stuff. Um, again, I mean, you look at these sheep down here. I mean, you don't even really notice them at first. They're just a texture. And look how beautifully they read. Um, large brush. And this is a good size painting. This thing is a good 36 inches wide. And so I'd say it's roughly a, 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 a one by two. So uh, that'd be an 18 by 36. And Greg paints a lot of these things on the spot in the winter time. I've painted with him. The guy's, the guy's a, just a, a, a real force of nature when he gets out there and starts moving these big piles of paint around. Uh, but just a just a joy to see and, and to experience the the imagery that he's capable of, of achieving with these with with these big brushes with a lot of paint and simplifying not letting not allowing himself to get bogged down in details. That's the, I mean really guys, there is no secret to it. It's learning to see simply and allowing it to happen on the canvas. It's, it's just, it's having, it's having enough bravery to trust yourself with those larger implements. You're not going to hurt yourself. Trust me. I mean, this is, nobody gets wounded in these, in these little skirmishes here and you will learn so much. I like to think when I'm looking at the subject, I simplify in Number one, I use a larger tool, of course, and more paint. But I, I also, the dialogue that I have with myself is how little can I get away with to, that will carry the, the feel of what I'm looking at? How little? I mean, it's kind of a lazy way. But it's, it's, it's the way, it's that self-talk I use to keep it simple, to remind myself constantly, just keep it simple. Don't fuss, just paint the shapes, squint down, match that color and value that you see out there. I mean, when you look at the landscape, you immediately start thinking not in terms of what it is, but what do I mix to get that? That's the, that's the language that is constantly going on with an experienced painter. Oh, look at that. Now, what do I mix to get that? And how much of it do I need? So, and the same as, you know, of trying to figure out, okay, where do I want my darks and my lights? And, and that's, that's my, my patterns. So he's got what in, in comparatively speaking is a complex pattern with these, with the tree line here against a big, simple man-made shape. And then of course the simplicity of the, this foreground and, and the snow. And then those sheep are just accents. They're just, it's just paint on a canvas. So how, how utterly cool is that? I mean, this thing is, I wish it was hanging in my house. Uh, next we'll go to a, another good friend of mine, Josh Elliott. And granted, this is a small piece. as a little six by eight. He just posted it on Facebook uh, for a show that I have coming up. And I, I'm, I'm in, in a few days in Cody, Wyoming. And uh, Josh is just a, just such a powerful young painter and and uh, again he's not allowing the detail to get in the way of the big message the the big statement uh larger brushes simpler shapes it's just, uh, you know once again i said, trust yourself to use to wield a, a a larger tool and and realize how little it really takes to make the statement. I love these little cool accents right up here in the shadows on this against that, that warm higher key um, sunlit mountainsides, uh, mountainside up there. And that just tells the story. Those little, those little shadows, those little form shadows tell the story, don't they? The same as you let this trickle down through the big grove of aspen trees I mean, this, I'm sure he just painted this. And, uh, and how simply he kept his foreground. And you know that's just complex as all get out. But he has not allowed himself to buy into that. And when you squint down, boy, I mean, this thing, you, this thing reads from across the room 
immediately that has tremendous impact, visual impact. Hi, I'm Skip Whitcomb. I'll be conducting a mentoring course on color harmony. In over 40 years of teaching, color seems to be one of the biggest mysteries. We'll be able to spend a year together developing a reliable foundation for making harmonious color decisions. There are certain irrefutable truisms in painting. One is the fewer colors used, the stronger and more harmonious the statement. Economy of color equals clarity of intention. Respected painters, past and present, understood this concept and have employed it in one form or another. We will explore the power of a limited palette, calculating progressive sequences of three to six colors, referred to as harmonic chords, and explore how to select the best color set to serve our concept. The goal is to give each artist a reliable foundation for making color decisions, for developing personal expressions of color. Hope to see you in the course.